Maka's guides. <laughs> Hey everyone, Maka here, and welcome back to Doom Eternal. This is the Ancient Gods 1 DLC, and in this video series, there are a couple of videos, I'll be showing you how to get everything in every level, as well as how to unlock all the new achievements or trophies. Now, there is an achievement for getting extra life mode complete with at least five extra lives, so keep that in mind. We'll also have to find all of the codex pages, all of the secret encounters, and all of the runes. There's also three secret achievements that you cannot miss for progression. So just start up a new save and choose the difficulty. I'll be playing on Hurt Me Plenty, but make sure you choose extra life mode if you want to only do one playthrough. However, if you do run out of lives, you will lose, so it's not necessarily the best idea on your first time through. Let's go through our actual setup here and see everything we need. We have all of the guns and suit upgrades for the actual runes. This is completely up to you, obviously. You can play however you want to play, but this is the setup that I would personally recommend. I like to leave my enemies in a longer stagger state, and I like to uh, gain health from the blood punch and uh, additional armor and stuff from uh, using fire and stuff like that. So it's up to you. But for the actual gun mods, what I'm going to recommend is for the combat shotgun, use the uh, grenade launcher. For the assault rifle, make sure you use the headshot precision. Then for the chain gun, I'm just going to use shield. The plasma gun I don't use. For the ballista, use arc blast. And for the rockets, use the lock-on. Now, a fair warning, as you can probably tell by the length of the video, the missions in the DLC are exceptionally long, with this mission being over an hour. And this is all edited down. I know exactly what I'm doing, what I'm fighting up against, and exactly how to kill it. So, on your first time through, if you're not watching a guide like this, it could take you over two hours easily. At the very beginning here, you're just going to relearn some of those skills you may have lost when you stop playing this game for the last couple of months. So just take out all of the enemies, make sure you're using your ice grenades to freeze enemies, your normal grenades to kill them. You can chainsaw for extra ammo, you can use your super shotgun in order to uh, chain yourself to enemies to build more armor as well. So just get used to everything, those glory kills are really important to generate blood punches. And once you are done killing all of the enemies, you will open up a door and you can proceed. So once this door opens up, we're going to make our way in, we're going to blood punch and uh, just take care of the enemies as quickly as possible. And we are going to be picking up keys, retro style doom. There is a blue access key card, just past that office, look to the left and you'll find it sitting up on the ledge. There's also a supercharge on this balcony which we can't grab until later. Up to you if you want to go and grab it, but I'm actually going to skip it as I don't find supercharges particularly useful. Although I could see how they're more useful on the harder difficulties for sure. Uh, for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. I will show the vast majority of the superchargers, by the way, so don't worry about it. We will actually grab like three or four of them during this mission. After you grab the key card, you will have to take care of a couple of enemies. And now we can go upstairs. We will spawn an empowered demon. These were very briefly used, I believe, in the regular campaign. To be honest, I don't really remember. But these are somewhat new, or a lot more common at least in the DLC. When there is an empowered demon, I would highly recommend that you focus on them as your primary target, as they will basically buff all of the other enemies and they're going to be a lot stronger. And uh, you don't want to mess with them and keep them alive for too long. Also, I don't know if anyone else is playing on Xbox One X, but I found that when I would use grenades and freeze and do a ton of stuff all at once, my frame rate would actually be unnecessarily affected, which is kind of uh, unfortunate because I thought this game was really well optimized, but I guess not. Anyways, once you do kill all of the enemies, you will open up the uh, access to the blue keycard rooms, and we can now head inside. There will be some stuff in there as well as our first codex page. We will need all of the codex pages, all of the secret encounters, all of the runes, so make sure we grab all of them along the way. There are a total of eight of those in this level, and I'll also be showing you all of the extra live locations, and I'll show you a bunch of the secret areas that you don't necessarily have to go to, but just work on the enemies for now.
Now after we clear out all of the enemies, we'll reach a checkpoint and we'll have to click the button in order to undo the lockdown, which will open up the door. Now to this room, there is a connected room and we'll make sure to go there. There is a red access door, which we don't have access to. But if we do drop down, we'll find a room that was connected to the room where we found the blue key card. And now it is open, which it wasn't open before. And in this room, we can find an important codex page. We we'll need to make sure we grab all of them. You can always press back to read about the codex page, but I won't be doing that for the rest of the DLC. At this point, just follow through with the checkpoint marker and you should be okay. At this point, you will be introduced to turrets. Now, turrets can be a bit of a pain if you're not careful. What I would recommend is just use the rifle, make sure you have the precision attachment mod, and just basically wait for it and quick scope it whenever you can. And uh, they're not that bad at all as long as you're using that correct weapon. If you're trying to shotgun blast or, I don't know, use some kind of ballista on the uh, turret, it can be a pretty painful experience. Maybe the normal ballista would work, but basically anytime you aim at the turret, it will try to disappear to save itself. So you definitely want to be quick and use something that has a lot of accuracy at a long distance. So we're going to do that again once I enter this room. It will take two shots from this gun to destroy a turret, but you definitely want to take care of the turrets pretty much right out of the gate if you enter a room and you see any. Once you do enter this room, now there are a bunch of enemies that will attack you. This is a long battle. This DLC level in general is just a lot of fighting, which is fine, but uh, maybe, you know, that means a little less commentary than usual for me. There will be a quad damage pickup, which is the purple orb near the back of the room. Just ignore that for now. We have to come back to this room kind of after, and it is a lot harder the second time we come to the room. So I'm going to save that orb for later. So just take care of all the enemies and save the quad damage.
After clearing out all of the enemies, you'll reach a checkpoint and you'll be asked to go get the uh, red key card. Just mop up the room for any ammo or any uh, chainsaw fuel you might want. But the jump for this is to go here and basically from the beginning of the room, jump up on the ledges to the left. And then you can jump across the gap and break through the vent. Uh, there might be another way to get in here, but this is definitely the way you want to go. And there is a one-up right here, which is very important. Drop down. And then basically you can drop down a second time or you can go the opposite way and jump up. If you go here, you will get your first one up. Now the DLC is very, very hard, so I will burn through most of my one ups. Keep that in mind. I am playing on that medium difficulty, which for me is uh, challenging enough. But uh, for you, you might be playing on hard or you may be playing on easy. That's fine too. Uh, either way, that's your one up for now. And if you would prefer to keep it, there is a pretty cool upgrade that we can grab later on in this level that will basically save our 1-ups for us. As we exit the room, more enemies will spawn. Now is probably a pretty good time to try to grab that quad damage just to take care of some of these annoying enemies and have them kind of out of the way. So I'm going to grab the quad damage and then just take care of everyone in the room. Also, you do have BFG ammo, but I would probably recommend saving it for later. There are a couple of tricky spots that it will come in more handy. After completing that room, it is now time to leave. You will be given a little bit of a fight here with a couple of enemies, but you should make quick work of them if you're paying attention. And we can now exit to the next room where we will have to click a key to continue. However, unfortunately for us, there is a Marauder first. The Marauder strategy is going to be the same as before. Equip the Ballista and equip the Super Shotgun. And then as he swings to you, Hit him once with the Ballista, once with the Super Shotgun. Unfortunately for me, I don't have any Super Shotgun ammo. So I'm going to have to chainsaw this enemy next to me in order to grab some ammo. And if you just cycle back and forth from that Ballista and the Super Shotgun as he attacks you, you should be able to get him in like less than 20 seconds if you have decent aim. Then you can take care of the rest of the enemies, do whatever you want with them. This should open up the elevator. You can go inside and now ride the elevator. As you ride the elevator, you may notice a secret encounter gore nest through the window, which we'll actually obviously have to do. This one's not too bad. It's uh, pretty easy, but if you're not paying close attention, it can be really easy to miss it just here right in front of us as we were going up. So to get this one, you're going to want to exit out of the elevator, take care of all of the enemies. You may want to take care of some of the enemies on the other side of the bridge as well. 
and then what we need to do is basically jump underneath us to do that what you want to do is um, take care of the air vent on the left hand side and then just jump down and uh, dash across there are also two turrets so we're going to take care of those as turrets can be you know really really annoying and do actually quite a bit of damage um, so we're going to be careful with that take care of the arachnotron if i remember correctly and then what we can do is drop down underneath us for that first of two secret encounters secret encounters work a little bit differently now than they used to back when i first played this game i think now you can unlock like i don't know some kind of xp boosts for your weekly event level i'm not sure they changed a bunch of stuff with how the challenges work in this game but after the secret encounter is triggered basically i would just recommend using your ice grenade use a normal grenade and then mop up with whatever gun you prefer so you can use something like your blood punch or a super shotgun to just make quick work of the other enemies and once everyone is dead you will get that challenge complete i didn't have that much time left over but this one's definitely really easy uh, i didn't even have to use things like my bfg or waste ammo that i like now to get up from here there is a climbable wall behind us so make your way back up and there's just some platforming coming up. The platforming is pretty simple, but if you get stuck, just follow the video and uh, it should make sense. There will be a bunch of enemies in front of us as well as a punchable melee block that will bring over a container that we can then jump to and we can ride that container to the next area. This jump coming up can be a little bit tricky, but you definitely don't want to shoot the target too early. You want to make sure you shoot it between your swings or else the air will turn on as you're going across it. So you do have to time that a little bit. Hopefully you don't fall too many times. And then we made our way into this room. This room is pretty simple. Just take care of all of the enemies and then you can kind of leave the room. There is a secret supercharge that I'm going to show you right now. To get the supercharge from where we walked in, you're just going to want to jump over the fence just to our left. And there you can drop down and you'll find a little secret as well as that supercharge, which will obviously grant you all of your health back. Which is pretty useful, I guess, if you don't have a lot of health or if you're playing on a harder difficulty. Just take care of all of the enemies before moving on. So I did a quick sweep of the room before leaving, and then as I left, a bunch of enemies spawned. They're not really that important. What's really important is that there will be an arch vial that spawns, which I believe is probably the most annoying enemy of the entire game if you don't know what you're doing against it. As soon as it spawns, you want to be extremely aggressive. Freeze it, grenade it, use all of your most powerful weapons, maybe, you know, save your BFG ammo, but take care of the arch vial as fast as possible. If you don't, they start spawning more and more enemies, they start protecting those enemies with a buff, and it can be really hard to win a fight once the Archvile kind of gets going. So whenever you do see one of them, be super aggressive. 
Then what we can do is run forward, look up and behind us, shoot the target, do the swing, and the air will take us the rest of the way. There are a bunch of enemies as we land, which we'll take care of, and then a couple of uh, little collectibles we'll want to grab. I'll show you them uh, in just a few seconds. Once all the enemies are taken care of, go to the bottom catwalk and walk forward as if you're kind of walking towards the checkpoint. However, there's nothing here unless you jump up into the right onto the balcony. Follow this balcony around to find our next codex page and you'll find a little secret. So that's pretty cool. We can then use the uh, swing bars, the yellow swing bars to make our way towards our checkpoint and continue a little bit further on in the level. We now entered this room and honestly, it's one of the harder fights in the level in my opinion. I took a lot of damage and I think I actually end up losing my extra life unfortunately. You can, if you want, use one of your BFG ammo here. I would recommend waiting until the Doom Hunter spawns, but that's up to you and how your playstyle is or you know how you're feeling about the fight in general. You definitely want to move around a lot and head up and down the stairs pretty often. If you get stuck at the bottom there with all of the enemies, it can be really easy to get stuck in a corner and basically you're stun locked and there's nothing you can do about it. So I would recommend kind of jumping up and down when you can. This will allow the enemies to kind of spread out a little bit more so that you don't just get completely obliterated in a corner. Um, a Doom Hunter will spawn, a couple of more enemies will spawn, so it's up to you how you fight them. But uh, just make sure you always have a decent amount of ammo and take your time based on your play style. Um, you, I probably wouldn't recommend using that BFG, but if you do, that's A-OK, -okay, up to you. I would just recommend trying your best to not burn an extra life if you don't have to. Also, an Empowered Pain Elemental will spawn. Uh, they're pretty important to try to take care of pretty soon. I have really terrible aim, as you'll see, so I end up basically uh, wasting a lot of time and ammo trying to kill it when I really didn't have to. Once we complete the fight, we will get a checkpoint and a door will open up. Do not go up the obvious staircase in front of us. Instead, go behind it and you can grab a codex page. We are still making progress on these collectibles. 
I hope you believe me now when I told you that this level was pretty long. I think we're at about the halfway mark at this point. You'll enter this room, you'll get a cutscene which I will skip for the purposes of keeping this video series brief, and a Marauder will spawn. As always with the Marauder, go for that Ballista Combat Shotgun 1-2 Punch. You can also, if you're good with your timing, try to hit them with a melee or a grenade. If you can hit them with a, if you can launch the grenade kind of before they're even stunned, you can kind of triple hit them and it will do massive damage. You can get them done really, really quickly and easily. But it's a little bit of a waste if you are not careful with that nade. This tiger can also be extremely annoying in this small little room. Either way, take out all of the enemies and then we can continue for a bit. Uh, interact with the door in order to proceed. Now, once we open up the door, there is a cutscene, which I'll skip to keep the video series nice and brief. And then just follow the checkpoint for a bit. There will be a large fight in front of us after a small platforming section for the next fight. Again, just stay alive. Use those best practices you've been practicing this whole time. And uh, try to... I would not use my BFG ammo in this fight, even if I had to. I would save it. So that's up to you. There is a yellow orb, which is haste which makes you move really fast, but also gives you infinite ammo on every gun except your BFG. So if you need, like, rocket ammo, you can pick up that haste and just rocket whatever enemy is in your way. There will be some really big, massive enemies that spawn, so take care of them. And uh, this fight isn't too bad, just keep moving. Another fight complete, another checkpoint reached, so we can now head to the door to exit out the area. There are a couple of important optional things we'll need to do here. 
As you walk forward, the tentacles will come out of the ground, so make sure you take care of them. It's pretty advantageous to not take too much damage. So, uh, yeah, just make sure you take care of them so that you can keep as much health as possible. A mancubus will kind of show up out of the hallway to your left. Now, the left is where we go to actually complete the level. We're going to ignore that. Instead, we're obviously going to go forward into this kind of secret area. And to the right, we had a slayer gate. We're going to need the key, so we're just going to continue on to the next room. We'll get locked in this room. I would recommend using an ice grenade as well as your rockets to make quick work of this enemy. I forget their name. You can let me know in the comments down below. I get, are they the Baron of Doom, potentially? I forget. Uh, either way, you're going to take out this enemy, and that will allow the door that locked you in to now open up. You definitely want to have a decent amount of ammo, as we will be doing a Slayer Gate coming up. So make sure you chainsaw some of these extra enemies just in case. We can follow forward and grab the auto map, which is kind of useful, but not really all that useful. And then we can grab this little chainsaw ammo. And there is a floating platform out here with a turret. You can jump at the turret and use the, plat use the actual turret as a platform for this next jump. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to take the turret out so I don't take too much damage. And once you take the turret out, what we're going to have to do is basically swing forward and to the right. And there will be a grate that we can break through here. And once we break through it, this will lead us to the Slayer Gate key, which we will obviously need. Once we have the Slayer Gate key, we can now enter the Slayer Gate. Slayer Gates are back. However, they do offer a pretty cool and unique reward in comparison to the Slayer Gates from the uh, main campaign. Now, the Slayer Gate, this one, I think, it's pretty difficult. I'll just be honest. It's not the hardest uh, by any means, but I definitely lost a life one or two times. I would recommend at this point, if you do have two BFG ammo, I'd recommend using one of them during this fight, as we will have a BFG ammo pickup in one of the next rooms we're about to visit. And the next room we're going to visit isn't hard. So if you have two BFG ammo, I would definitely recommend just using one when the Arch Vial spawns or near the end of the Slayer Gate. You can continue watching the video to see when that is. That's going to be up to you. Either way, as with all Slayer Gates, stay alive, move a lot, use those grenades, use that uh, you know uh, chainsaw to fuel up more ammo, get those glory kills, those blood punches, dash around. And you should be good to go. This one lasts about four or five minutes. At the end, though, a lot of really tough enemies do spawn all kind of at once. The one you want to pay attention to the most is the Arch Vial, as we always do. So take care of the Arch Vial as quickly as possible. And then you can start kind of working your way around the map and taking care of some of the other enemies. And that will be the end of the Slayer Gate. I'll rejoin you with commentary once we're done to tell you about what the reward we get is.
Now, once we come out of the Slayer Gate, we will be rewarded with a rune. But these runes don't work exactly like the campaign ones, since we already have all of those. These are called support runes, and they basically offer a modifier based on your playstyle. You can have one here that allows you to gain your extra life back from an enemy that gave you a blow. Now, the other one here is the ability to do a concussive blast if you take out a weak spot. The one I'm going to go with for now is called Desperate Punch, which doubles the uh, strength of my blood punch if I am below 75 health. I noticed that I was below 75 health for a good portion of my fights, and I blood punch quite a bit, so I figured double damage blood punches would be really useful. But you might find that if you have the ability for basically getting one final hit before you're killed and it kind of goes into slow-mo on the harder difficulties that one's really useful and if you go with the ability to earn your extra life back that could also be really useful if you're trying to beat extra life mode with at least five extra lives it's going to come in handy because you can grab your lives back so you don't have to worry about losing them as much in this room you're going to enter it's a really easy fight but there are a couple of things we want to grab before exiting the room so i'll rejoin you with commentary make sure you don't leave the room With all of the enemies dead, you'll have a checkpoint and it'll tell you to go through this door. Instead, go through the door next to it and there will be a console on your left hand side. Make sure you interact with it. This will kind of open up these uh, underwater chambers out the window. And we can also grab this dive suit, which allows us to go underwater and basically breathe underwater. But keep an eye out on your timer. You can run out of oxygen if you're not careful. You can also blast through the grate to get some armor, which is pretty useful. And now we're going to go dive into that water. And there's a couple of things we can grab. If we look at the very left, we can go through here. And this is probably the most important one and the one you have to grab. Go underneath and then dive through the grate. And you'll notice that there is a push plate. And this push plate will take us to our secret, second secret encounter, Gore Nest. This one, in my opinion, is a little bit more difficult than the first one. As you use it, uh, five or six invisible pinkies will spawn. And what I would recommend is as soon as they spawn, use your ice grenade to freeze them, switch to your normal grenade to try to damage them as much as possible, and then try to mop them up with splash damage from your rocket launcher. There is also uh, a regular enemy that spawns kind of on the opposite side, so make sure you take care of them just in case. And this one can be a little bit more difficult. If you really, if you have two BFG, you can use your BFG here as we're literally about to pick up a new bullet of BFG. But hopefully you're able to complete that second secret encounter, which is definitely hard, but not impossible. You just got to be quick and you definitely want to use um, the ice bomb. Now, as you leave the grate, you can grab the oxygen in front of you and go underneath the second kind of power station to find a BFG ammo. I have full BFG ammo, so I didn't plan that well enough. But if you don't, you'll be able to pick that one up. And additionally, if you go to the opposite side of the gore nest, you can blast through a grate. And here you can go up and through a uh, another vent and enter into a secret room. And in this secret room, you can get a supercharge, which again, I don't believe is uh, too useful, but might as well grab it while we're here. We can then go back from where we came and just follow the checkpoint marker to proceed with the rest of the level. We're, uh, we're about two thirds of the way through at least now, by the way.
This jump should be pretty obvious, but we need to melee the push block, then jump up onto the container. And you'll notice that, you may have noticed that there is an extra life nearby, but we can't actually grab it without riding this container. So just, you can kind of skip everything. Um, there's the extra life just off in the distance. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, wall climb up, and instead of going towards the checkpoint, you can go towards the extra life. However, this extra life is a little bit of a trap on purpose. And what I mean by that is a ton of enemies that wouldn't normally spawn will spawn if you go for this extra life. So that's going to be up to you. You can skip this extra life and not have to fight all of these enemies, but uh, I would recommend probably grabbing the extra life. I would use your rockets here. There will be an arch vial that spawns, as with all arch vials. They are critical to your success, so make sure you make quick work of him by using an ice bomb and rockets that home in. Take care of the arch file as quickly as possible, or else you are going to have a bad day. And then we can just proceed and keep following the checkpoints. Inside of this room, there will be a large scale fight. I think this one's one of the easier ones in the level personally, but you can let me know if you disagree. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, you could drop a like, it would mean a lot to me. Either way, during this fight, you don't have to worry about too much. Take care of all of the enemies. About halfway through the fight, a buff totem will spawn. When the buff totem spawns, it is your number one priority to take it out. It will spawn right here where I'm basically standing in the uh, top deck, kind of inside of the wall there. So, after you take out that buff totem, you'll have to clear all the enemies again, and then we can basically get a checkpoint, and uh, we're almost close to the end of the level now, and we can kind of uh, work our way towards the end of the level by following the checkpoints after this fight. Alright, after that room, we now enter this room. There is a turret at the back, and there are a couple of, like, super easy enemies, but there's also a secret in this room we can grab before leaving. I took a little bit of a break before coming back to the game, so if you watch this gameplay, it's almost like I forgot all of the controls. My thumbs just did not want to cooperate with me at all. I should have been able to do this room in, like, 10 seconds, but it took me, like, 3 minutes instead. Uh, just take care of all of the enemies, and then grab yourself a dive suit from upstairs. And then what we can do is quickly dive down and grab a secret before leaving the room.
So I grabbed myself the armor, and now we're just gonna jump into the water. If you jump into the water to the right-hand side of this pipe, you'll notice that the pipe is burst, and you can go inside of the pipe, and this will reveal a secret area, as well as a supercharge, so you'll now have full armor and full health. Very useful on those harder difficulties for sure. But otherwise, we are ready to move on to the next room. There's a little bit more platforming and then what I believe is a really hard fight at the end of the level. We're getting pretty close now. For this section, we will be swimming underwater for a decent amount of time. I don't know if this shark can kill you, but if you time it correctly, you won't even have to worry about it. Make sure you grab the oxygen to stay alive. Use that dash accordingly, making sure not to bleed it out completely or else it takes longer to recharge. And then you can come up out of the water and there will be a couple of fights here. First is this Mancubus, uh, which don't waste your blood punch on it like I did. That was a terrible mistake that ended up almost costing me the next fight. But go into the next hallway, and at the end of the next hallway, there is a very important turret that I would recommend you take out. I forgot that that turret was there. This is my, like, third time playing through the levels. I play through each level at least two or three times before I film for you guys. But I just forgot that this turret was there. So take out this turret as one of the most important things before taking out all these little enemies. Because when you take out all of these little enemies, bigger enemies spawn, and then that turret becomes harder to take care of. So, I'm going to freeze this guy, I'm going to kill him, and then there's going to be another one that spawns. And at this point, I realize that there is a turret shooting at me and, you know, making it a lot harder than it has to be. So, take out that turret when you get the chance, and then this big enemy has to go down, and then another big enemy will spawn which actually it's spawning right behind me right now and I'm already at a pretty big disadvantage for not taking care of it. This big guy, you want to make sure you can ice bomb him, normal bomb him, and then use all of your rockets. Feel free to use that chainsaw for extra ammo and then we can proceed to the next room and then dive down into the water again and go to the next room again. As you dive up into this room, which is the room we're supposed to go to, you'll notice that there is a locked two up uh, behind the door. So all we'll need to do is dive back down and basically keep continuing clockwise, so basically to your left, and go up and then you can follow the hallway back to kind of where we came from and it will open up the, or it won't open up, but you'll be able to grab this two up. So it's basically just a one up, but it gives you two lives instead of one. Pretty cool secret, you can grab that and then continue on. Dive back down into the water and back to the hole we came from. Then you can just follow the checkpoint up a couple of climbable walls to the last fight of the mission.
Seraphim since before your time. It's a relic from their past. The organization's most... Now, this is the last fight of the mission, and there is BFG ammo near the top middle, so make sure if you have full ammo, you at least use one of them during this next fight, as we'll have enough. But as you approach the door to exit, two Marauders will spawn at the exact same time, and this is easily the most annoying part of the game by far. So basically, they're going to be, uh, you know, chasing after you non-stop. You're going to be using that super shotgun ballista combo that we've always been using but it's really hard to keep a track of both of them. And if one of them's a little bit further than the other one, then you'll start getting onslaughted with the little axe. And uh, it's really hard to basically time it so that they're both taking damage. I would recommend just focusing on one of them and only one of them and try to kill one of them as quickly as possible. Additionally, there's a lot of cannon fodder enemy on the uh, ground. So you can use these smaller enemies to either torch them or use your combat, your super shotgun to get more armor. You can also use your ice and whatnot. These are basically just going to be used to regenerate a little bit of health, a little bit of armor, and your ammo as well. And just keep working on these marauders until they are both down. And once the marauders are both down, you then begin kind of the last couple of waves of enemies that will eventually conclude in a checkpoint and the door to leave the area opening up. As I mentioned before, there is the BFG ammo at the top. I'm going to use two of my BFG ammo, but it's up to you if you want to bring one or two bullets forward with you onto the next level. I would highly recommend just trying to keep your lives when possible here. If you are about to die, you can try to reload the checkpoint to save yourself a life, but that's going to be up to you. Otherwise, a ton of enemies, a lot of little cannon fodder as well though, and the floor at the bottom is electric electrocuted, so make sure you're not taking damage unnecessarily by just standing on the ground. You can use that cannon fodder enemy to basically, you know, grab your ammo, freeze them, light them on fire, and then grenade them, and you'll just get all of your health back all at once. But there are two, uh, at the end, there will be two large enemies that spawn kind of together, and this is probably a good opportunity to use your BFG. Uh, you'll see exactly where I use mine. You want to try to get as many enemies, as much damage as possible with that BFG ammo. But otherwise, as soon as you clear out this room, you will complete the level. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. And I hope this video was helpful. Drop a like, and hopefully I see you in the next Doom Eternal Ancient Gods 1 DLC video. Peace.